Please look at your zipper. At your pan zipper, that is. Well, how come that the flap usually covers the zipper from the left side? Because 90% of the world population is right-handed, and this makes handling just simpler for them. And the remaining 10%, they have just to cope. Now, this is, of course, just pure convenience and not a matter of life and death. But what if it were a matter of life and death? And what if not 10%, but 50% of the world population would be put at a disadvantage? This is the case of modern medicine. If I tell you that most body organs work differently in men and women, wouldn't you assume that medicine would be adjusted to that? Unfortunately, this is not the case. And I want you to think for a minute about that. Because this fact still shocks me, and I'm a medical professional. For over 40 years, I have been a specialist of obstetrics, gynecology, and fertility, and I have chaired in succession uh, three major OBGYN departments. I have taught students and residents, and I have provided medical care, and I have done research. About 12 years ago, a colleague of mine and a dear friend passed away. Being a man, he had been unaware that a small lump in his breast was actually breast cancer. And therefore, treatment came far, far too late. This was a tragedy, and I was devastated. How come that no one, not even him or me, think about that possibility? So that's when I started scouring the literature, the scientific literature, that is. But everything I found about breast cancer, almost everything related to females. But in most other medical fields, the opposite was the case. Most research has been performed in men, and the results are applied to females. It never occurred to me before that women and men do not differ only in their reproductive organs, but virtually in all other body systems. And this became a game changer for me, a change in my professional career. I entered the new an exciting, revolutionary field of gender medicine, more exactly, gender and sex-conscious medicine. So before I continue, I would like to explain briefly gender and sex. By gender, we mean how we define ourselves, or how society defines individuals or groups of individuals according to characteristics of womanhood and of manhood. But this definition is, of course, not complete. The genders which do not fit into that binary frame of women and men. And if you look at this list, which you don't have to read, of course, you see over 60 definitions of gender, and this goes on. So when I speak to you now in my talk about gender, I mean all of those. And now I need to explain, of course, sex. <laughs> but not what some of you might be thinking right now. By biological sex, I mean our genes and our chromosomes. And specifically, these two very different chromosomes lettered X and Y, which determine if we are men or women. Now, now let me give you the four most important and fundamental insights of all of that, what I've been talking about till now. The first insight is that the two very different categories, gender and sex, are inseparably intertwined in their impact on our health. And the second insight is the same organs in women and men may function differently, sometimes only slightly differently, but differently. And the third insight is that the same diseases may present with different symptoms or intensity of symptoms and may occur more often in men or in women. And the fourth insight is 
The same treatment may have different effects or side effects in women, in men. Now, you may feel now the same utter disbelief which I felt, and you may ask yourself, what? Hasn't this been known before? You may even stop and ask yourselves, is my doctor even aware of these differences in gender and sex? Many are not aware, yet. But yes, the bodies of women and men are very different. We have different genetics. The hormonal environment in which we developed as fetuses before we were born is very different. Our gender roles are different. Not only the size and the, and, and the weight of our bodies are usually different, but also the composition of all our body systems is different. Only one of the two sexes can give birth. And the changes which a female body undergoes during pregnancy and after delivery are just enormous. You see, what looks similar is not necessarily the same. <laughs> okay, pain is a good example how gender and sex may affect our health. Because of biological sex, women are more likely to suffer from painful diseases than men. And just to illustrate that, on this list, again, you don't have to read the lists, on this list is the number of painful diseases which are more common in men. And this is the list in women. And this list is three times longer. Who of you in this audience believe that women are more resistant to pain? Please raise your hands. Well, I guess everybody does. Yeah. Well, the truth is women are more sensitive to pain. But women know better to cope with pain. And as the saying goes, a man is either strong as a horse or just about to die. Let us talk now about how these gender stereotypes may affect your health and the treatment you receive for pains. This is a study on about 1,000 men and women who were admitted to an emergency ward because of abdominal pain. Now see, women had to wait longer before treatment was initiated, 65 minutes as opposed to 49 minutes. And women also received less painkillers than men. Discrimination? Most likely not because the medical staff included men and women, doctors and nurses. The more likely explanation is a subconscious prejudice which puts women at a disadvantage. You see, as in many areas of our life, we tend to act more on what we believe in than on what we see and on what we hear. And complaints about pain are taken simply more seriously in men than they are in women. Let's speak about medications. How come that the same medications may have different effects and side effects in men and in women? Well, the effects of medication depend, among others, on how they are dissolved in the body, in the various tissues of the body. But the bodies of men and women are very different. The human body consists mostly of water, as we know. About 60% in men and about 55% in women. But the difference does not end here. Look at these two athletes of the same body weight. As you can see, she will have in her inner cavities in the body twice the amount of fatty tissue than he has and she will have 20% less muscles than he has. So medications will be distributed in the various body tissues very differently. But the difference does not end here. He will be able to, to eliminate from his body certain medications quicker than she does. And she will get rid of medications like prednisone or insulin faster than he does. 
So, now if we remember that research has been performed and still is being performed in men and women, but mostly in men, what does that mean actually? This means that some women, perhaps many women, are undertreated by some medications. And other women are overtreated by some medications, which may lead to more side effects, and which may lead even to the abandonment of treatment altogether because of those side effects. And still, in the pharmacies, on the shelves of our pharmacies, we see the same medications in the same packages provided to women and men, in the best case scenario, just adjusted for body weight. Let me give you now two examples from the clinical area, two clinical examples. Lungs. And please brace yourselves. For the female smokers in this audience, you should know that for the same amount of cigarettes you smoke, you actually smoke more than a man because usually your lungs are smaller. Because of your biological sex, you are more vulnerable to smoking and you will find it more difficult to quit. And because of the biological sex, women are twice as likely to suffer from certain types of lung cancer, which are the most deadliest cancer in women more than breast cancer. And guess what? Research on lung cancer is being performed predominantly in men. Well, let's look at heart disease. I think most of you in this audience, doctors or not, will be able to diagnose a heart attack when you see it. To witness the sudden onset of excruciating pain in the left shoulder which radiates into the left arm will be enough for everybody to usher that patient as soon as possible to the next emergency ward. But what if the symptoms are not classical? What if they develop slowly? What if they do not radiate into the left shoulder or the left arm, but rather to the chin or the neck? These are the more common symptoms in a substantial number of women. The patient herself might not be alarmed by the symptoms. And whoever is around her might also not be alarmed about these very vague symptoms. We call that patient's delay. And once this patient arrives to the emergency ward, the busy doctor might also not be immediately aware of these very vague and non-specific symptoms. This is what we call doctor's delay. And here comes the gender bias. Even if a heart attack has been diagnosed, women are much less likely to receive state-of-the-art treatment than men. Now what does that all mean? This means, or this leads to the very sad fact that today, heart diseases and diseases of the vascular system have become the number one killer among women, responsible for more death than from all types of cancer combined. Now let me offer my female audience a, a few can you believe it items. I dare to guess that except for your gynecologist or your endocrinologist, you have been very rarely asked by your doctor about your menstrual cycle. But does it make sense that the real dramatic hormonal changes along your menstrual cycle would not affect your entire system? It does not make any sense. Not for the medications you take, not for the workout you do, and not for the way you sleep. So let me give you two, here two pieces of advice. If you have to schedule elective surgery, try to plan it in the first two weeks of your cycle. Because at this time, wound healing seems to be better. And if you need a dentist appointment, try to have it scheduled during the last two weeks of your cycle. Because at this time, the levels of the natural painkiller progesterone 
a higher in your system. Some progress has been made during the last decade. Gender and sex specific research centers have been established. Some major universities are already teaching gender and sex conscious medicine. The European Union and the FDA have issued strong recommendations to include women into research. And the FDA has even issued sex specific recommendations for the two first drugs, both sleeping pills. No, not to put women asleep. <laughs> On the contrary, to have the, the recommendation was to have the doses for women, because until then, and for over 20 years, women had received overdoses of sleeping pills. Now, this is only the beginning. Much more needs to be done. Much more research needs to be done. And much more research needs to be redone. Healthcare personnel need to look at their patients through the new gender and sex lens and adjust treatment accordingly. And what can you do? You can be part of this change by just starting to ask your doctors questions like, has this prescription been adjusted to me being a woman? Or has this procedure been tested in men and in women? We are talking here about a fundamental change in a very basic and wrong concept, a true shift of paradigms. You see, only when we understand and acknowledge that women and men are different will we be able to improve the quality of medical care for men and for women alike.